Welcome to the Houston Zoo's live Facebook uh, video. Um, today we're coming to you from our Shafak exhibit. Hey guys. Um, so here, oh, I guess I should introduce myself. <laughs> My name is Tiffany and I'm a primate keeper here. Um, I, get the, I get to work with these guys every now and then and they are completely amazing. So I'm super excited to get to share my passion for them with you guys. Um, so some introductions here, we have Zenobia um, sitting down here on the ground. She's mom. Here we have her daughter, Athena. And then sitting way back there is dad, Gaius. Hey guys. Um, so this is our little family group. Um, you can see Gaia stays off towards the back because in the lemur world, uh, females are dominant. So the ladies get first choice at all of the goodies um, and Gaia will have to wait until they're all set. So we've got some sweet gum here for them today. You guys can see this? Um, and these lemur, th this is the Shafak, so they are a species of lemurs. Um, these guys are actu have, actually have a highly intensive and sensitive digestive tract. So the majority of their diet is um, mainly, as you can see, leaves and veggies. Um, so Pauli Pauline wants to know, Paulina wants to know how high the Shafak can jump. Um, these guys can uh, jump 20 feet from tree to tree. And hopefully they'll be jumping around a little bit more for us. Um, I'd like to give a ninth birthday shout out to Eve. Thank you for tuning in to enjoy these guys. Um, like all species of lemurs, um, the Shafak are found in Madagascar and only Madagascar. Um, there's nine different species of Shafak. Um, we just have the one species here. And these guys actually um, will rotate this exhibit. So today the three Shafak are out. Um, tomorrow it will be our it will be the crown pair that gets to come out. Um, Evie wants to know their average lifespan. Um, these guys can live between 20 to 30 years, um, especially in um, captivity here with us, where we can provide them with all of the medical care. Um, lemur predators, uh, the predators for these guys um, can be the big eagles. Um, Fusa can also be a predator of different species of lemurs. Um, and unfortunately, um, humans do impose a lot on their um, habitat too. Um, so Megan wants to know how I can tell them apart. Um, um, in this species of lemur, the Shafak, all, both male and female look the same, um, but they all have different personalities. So Athena over there uh, hanging on the mesh, she's easy to tell apart because she has the darker eyes. Um, then her daughter Athena here, most keepers can tell because she's four years old, so she's very active and into everything. 
And then Gaius, the male, he's usually off on his own because, like I said, he's at the bottom of the totem pole. Can you introduce your friend? They also appear to have a with. Oh, yes. Um, so also in this habitat, we have a radiated tortoise. Um, this is Mr. Fluke here. Um, radiated tortoises are also native to Madagascar. Um, and Fluke comes and goes as he likes. He has a little shelter. Um, he has his water dish. Um, the leavers don't seem to mind him at all. They don't really interact with him much. Um, and he does enjoy their leafy leftovers that they drop. Um, yes, these guys are endangered in the wild, um, mainly due to habitat loss from um, fires to create more croplands and the logging of trees for lumber. How much would you say they eat in a day? Um, so these guys, because they're here with us at the zoo, um, we have a very specialized diet for them. So they get a big grouping of the browse that you saw um, right now. Um, they'll get a little bit more browse this afternoon. And then in the mornings and the afternoons, they get a special um, biscuit that has all of the vitamins and minerals that they need. And because their digestive system is so specialized, they will also mainly just get um, veggies like peas and sweet potatoes. And they also get beans every day to help with that sensitive digestive system. So their tails are mainly um, used for balancing while they're jumping from tree to tree or hopping along the ground. Um, my favorite thing is um, they're just completely different from any other species of lemur I've um, had the opportunity to work with. Um, also, um, growing up, I was a huge fan of the show Zabumafu, um, so it was always kind of a lifelong dream of mine to eventually get the chance to work with the Shafak, um, and Zabumafu was actually this species of a lemur. Um, they're very, they're very different than other lemurs. They're very quiet. You won't hear them make a lot of vocalizations. Their favorite food would be um, their brows that they get. So today is sweet gum. Um, they really do love the mimosa tree leaves. Um, their all time favorite thing is peanut butter as a little tree and peanuts. Um, like I said, because they have a specialized um, digestive system, they can't get a lot of the extra stuff. Um, so the peanuts and peanut butter are a nice little treat for them. Um, when they sleep, um, they'll usually sit like they're sitting right now and they'll curl their tails in. Um, a lot of the times um, in family groups like this, they all three will be cuddled together. Um, and a little, little, a little cuddle party. So just like all lemurs, um, these guys have um, special modifications that you don't see in other primates. Um, for instance, their lower incisors are um, what they call a tooth comb. So they're very small and they actually look like um, the teeth of an actual comb. And that's what they use for when they're grooming. Um, and to aid with that, they also have what's called a, a second tongue underneath their, um, or underneath their tongue. It's a little like white pointed um, appendage and it's pushed through the tooth comb to clean the hair out.
yes, these guys do live in uh, groups in the wild. Um, here, like I said, we have our family group. Um, so you will find family groups and bigger social groups too out in the wild. Um, so again, like I said, if you're just tuning in, we have mom Zenobia sitting on the left up there. Um, Zenobia is 19 years old. Beside her is Athena, her daughter on the right. She is four years old and then you can just see his tail hanging down. But Gaius, the dad, is sitting up top there and he is 12. So, um, Someone wants to know if they mate for life. So in the lemur world, everything is up to the females. So if the female is happy with the male that she's been um, breeding with, then they will stay together. Um, but optimally, usually they will choose different partners every time. Um, Shafaka comes from um, their actual alarm call. Um, that's one of the few sounds you would hear them make. Um, so um, that's where that comes from. It's just the sound of their alarm call. Um, these guys live 20 to 30 years. Unlike all lemurs, these guys are really big on scent marking. Um, it's a big communication key for them. So you will, they have a gland underneath their tail. Um, the females do, so you'll usually see them um, scent marking different areas of their enclosure. Um, and then the males, like Gaius, have a scent gland underneath their chins. So you might see him doing a little um, chin rubbing. So how can we help save them in the wild? Um, like I said, a big factor for these guys um, is deforestation. Um, so the best way is just to make sure when you're buying lumber or any type of wood that it is um, from um, a local area and not imported. And that will help a lot with these guys. How do they communicate with each other? Um, so that's a good question. Like I said, scent marking is a really, really um, They will go around and smell. Um, and then they also do a few vocalizations. Um, when these guys are um, alarmed or feeling a little threatened, you also do see them doing a little head bobbing. And that's another form of communication for these guys. Um, so that's a good question. What type of enrichment do these guys like? So like all of our animals here at the Houston Zoo, these guys have um, an enrichment program. Um, their favorite types of enrichment are usually puzzle feeders, something that they have to figure out, especially if you put uh, peanuts in it. They will work on it and work on it until they um, get those peanuts out. Um, can they swim? So like most lemur species, um, they're not a huge fan of water. They have their little pool here that's mainly just for um, 
drinking and whatnot, they're not really going to get into the water to swim around. And it looks like their enrichment today was half coconuts. So you can see back there, uh, Zenobia's found a half coconut that's probably got some peanut butter smeared on it that she's working on. So as you just saw, Athena jumped over. Um, that's a specialized thing in Shafak. They mainly stay vertical. Um, so you'll see them leaping from these hanging platforms while staying vertical. And then when they're on the ground, they have like a gallop-like motion that they use. Um, all the power in these guys comes from their hind legs here. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for um, tuning in today um, and getting to see these amazing um, shafak that we have here. Um, please remember, um, if you are able to please do donate to the Emergency Zoo Fund on the HoustonZoo.org. Um, it helps take care of these amazing animals. Um, please remember to tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. for our next Facebook live feed. Bye.